Monday's the Psalter. I'm Pastor Vandercook. Of course, today is not Monday. It's Tuesday, uh, but I did not have the opportunity to create this video yesterday, so we're going to do it uh, on Tuesday instead. So uh, uh, here's Monday's in the Psalter on a Tuesday. Uh, today we're looking at Psalm 119, verses uh, 41 through 48. Um, before I do that, I want to talk about last week's video just a little bit. I made an error. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> Excuse me. I made an error last week in the pronunciation of the Hebrew letter that uh, was the heading for that. Uh, there are two Hebrew letters that uh, both are transliterated as uh, H's, I suppose, a hard H and a soft H into English. Last week's should have been the soft H, and I pronounced it as a hard H. Uh, I know that's a very minor thing, but uh, I don't want any of my... Uh, uh, Hebrew scholar friends to uh, be too upset about that particular error. But anyway, uh, it's a soft H last week. So last week's letter was hey, uh, and later we'll get to the harder H uh, in the Hebrew alphabet. Uh, so this this week we get to the, uh, the next of the Hebrew letters here uh, in this next section of eight verses of Psalm 119. And this is under the heading of Vav. Um, which is more or less how you pronounce that. Uh, it is basically a W and sometimes, honestly, has no pronunciation whatsoever in the Hebrew, uh, in, in Hebrew uh, words. But anyway, uh, this is the Vav, and it looks just kind of like a straight line up and down if you, look at the, uh, uh, if you look at it printed. Now, so here's, the, here's this section. Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Then shall, I have an, then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. And take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your rules. I will keep your law continually forever and ever, and I shall walk in a wide place, for I have sought your precepts. I will also speak of your testimonies before kings, and shall not be put to shame. For I find my delight in your commandments, which I love. <clears throat> I will lift up my hands toward your commandments, which I love, and I will meditate on your statutes. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. So I want to look especially at the first few verses of this psalm this week. Uh, the first thing here, verse 41, Let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord, your salvation according to your promise. Of course, that promise that he's talking about is the promise of the coming Messiah here. Uh, and of course, Jesus Christ has come. He has brought that mercy of God. We pray for God's mercy, and Jesus comes bringing it. Think about like the divine service. Uh, each week we have the Kyrie, uh, Lord have mercy, uh, Christ have mercy, Lord have mercy, or Lord have mercy upon us, takes on many different forms. Uh, but the, the general idea here is Lord have mercy. Well, how does God have mercy on us? He has mercy on us by sending his son, Jesus Christ, to uh, give up his life for the forgiveness of our sins. And what follows the Kyrie as you're uh, going through the divine liturgy? The glory in excelsis, the song of the angels. Uh, glory be to God on high and on earth, peace to all. Uh, on earth, uh, I'm getting the two different versions uh, mixed up in my head. Uh, glory to God in the highest and on earth, um, peace to God's pe and peace to God's people on earth. There we go. That's the one that's in divine service setting, uh, setting one. Um, but you have the song of the angels there that announces that Christ is here, that the mercy of God is here in Jesus Christ. And so, let your steadfast love come to me, O Lord. We pray this in this psalm, knowing that God has already done it. He sent us his steadfast mercy in Jesus Christ. In verse 42, Then shall I have an answer for him who taunts me, for I trust in your word. Because the world does indeed taunt us. It says, look, you're wasting your time. Uh, you're wasting your time with the word of God. What does it have for you? And it's true that as far as the riches of this world, they aren't there. Uh, so the world takes a look at you and it scoffs at you and says, hey, uh, you need to come after the things of this world instead of wasting all your time uh, with, with your God and with your religion, with your Jesus and everything else. But when Jesus comes and gives us God's mercy in his death and resurrection, then we have an answer for the world that taunts us. Because ultimately, you know, the world 
and unfortunately, a lot of Christianity goes this direction, too, or things that fly under the banner of Christianity go this direction of promising some type of prosperity or health, uh, wealth of some type if you come into the church. But that's not the gospel. What the church has that you can't find anywhere else in the world, and the world taunts us because we don't have the, the health and the wealth and everything else, but the church has the gospel. That's what's unique. That's the answer that we have for when the world says, what do you have of value? We have the thing with the most value. That's God's mercy shown to us in Christ Jesus. Uh, verse 43, the third verse here in this section, Take not the word of truth utterly out of my mouth, for my hope is in your rules. Now, I, I don't like the translation of rules there. Uh, I think it's better, uh, the King James has judgments instead, and I think that's more helpful to look at it that way. Uh, rules, I suppose, is correct on some level, but uh, I, I prefer judgments there, uh, and I think it's a more accurate translation because uh, rules indicates very much a, a law-based statement here, but really, the judgments of God, my hope is in your judgments. Well, his judgment on us because of Christ Jesus, his judgment on you because you have been baptized, is that you are not guilty. That's the hope that we have. Uh, the hope that we put in God's judgments because he has declared us not guilty in Jesus Christ. And so that's where we pin our hope. And then what follows, what flows out of the fact that we have been judged not guilty, is that we pay attention to God's law. And this is kind of a recurring theme, of course, throughout Psalm 119, is this idea that, hey, God, now that you have shown me mercy in Christ Jesus, I will in turn uh, I will thank, praise, serve, and obey you, to, to borrow uh, a little bit of the phrases, phraseology from the first article of the Apostles' Creed, Luther's meaning there. What do we do in response to what God has done for us? We obey his rules. We do what he says in his law. So pray this psalm this week and give thanks that indeed,